I'd like to read a short excerpt from a recent piece I created for a Melbourne-based initiative called Mini Comic of the Month. This is what it looks like. Um, so Mini Comic of the Month is a subscription service you should all get into. Um, it's a meditation on landscape and history as well as some other things. Um, as a few of my fellow senators have brought up, I think the history of Melbourne and the history of literary Melbourne is often um, depicted as, as a very white thing, and that's just not true. Thank you. Um, Happy Valley. Uh, just outside Castlemaine is a place called Happy Valley at the foot of Mount Alexander. It is a very peaceful, salubrious place. Forest Creek winds its way through the valley. It is strange that I was drawn to this place and find it full of both comfort and mystery before I knew of its past during the gold rush of the 1850s. This was a large Chinese encampment. It makes me think there is some thread linking my sensitivity to this landscape and the hope of those first Chinese miners who saw in the valley the fresh green promise of fortune, independence, and a new home. It was a difficult and dangerous life. Most of the Chinese miners were escaping violence and poverty in their motherland. Many were indentured laborers. They were not accepted or welcome here. Water shortages and contamination, poor diet, pestilence, and many fatal accidents took many victims. Furthermore, there was monstrous and often murderous animosity directed at the Chinese from white Europeans. Chinese people were kept, to the most, kept from the most lucrative sites and pushed to the edges like Happy Valley, places already abandoned by others. The complaint of the miners was that the Chinamen swarmed around them like devouring locusts. They follow on the heels of others, rewashing and, gle and gleaning up everything. Publicly sanctioned racism often spilled over into violence. Here is a list of anti-Chinese riots in which many were beaten or murdered, their possessions stolen or burned. Bendigo, Castlemaine, Ballarat, Diamond Gully, Maryborough, Campbell's Creek, Guildford, Creswick, Smith's Creek, Clunes, Tarangawa, Pegleg Gully, Spring Creek, <coughs> Mount Blackwood. But the worst attack in Victoria occurred on the Buckland River in the Ovens Valley area of northeastern Victoria. In July of 1857, a violent mob of around 90 tore through the Chinese camp on the Buckland, burning tents and buildings, including a beautiful new temple. The mob drove 2,500 Chinese people from their tents, destroying belongings, beating them with sticks and stones, and killing an unknown number. The victims fled terrified through the cold winter rain. At least three Chinese men were found dead after the riot, but it's not known how many drowned in the river, nor how many died further, later from wounds or from exposure to the cold. Some men took their own lives in desperation. One suicide note signed Su Kung, May 16, 1862, into with a particularly sorrowful sentence which once read, I find difficult to forget. I am walking a wrong step and I can't step back, just as a basin of water, having poured it over a horse's head, you cannot get back the same quantity. My heart aches when I read the accounts of these migrants in a harsh land, suffering endless persecution and pain. State-sanctioned racism continued on in the form of the White Australia policy from 1901, soon after Federation, and it was not completely dismantled until 1973. The leader of the Labor Party from 1960 to 1967, Arthur Colwell, defended the White Australia policy thus, I am proud of my white skin, just as the Chinese is proud of his yellow skin, and any man who tries to stigmatise the Australian community as racist because they want to preserve this country for the white race is doing our nation great harm. I reject the idea that Australia should or ever can become a multiracial society and survive. He said this in 1972. 1988, that's me and my mom. I am born the daughter of migrants. In August of that same year, John Howard argued for restricting Asian immigration as part of his One Australia policy. He said it would be, oh, someone just started following me on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> said, it would be in our interest and supporting a social cohesion if Asian immigration was slowed down so the capacity of the community to absorb it was greater. My parents laid a vote for Mr. Howard. 1996, Pauline Hansen's maiden address to Parliament contains this. I oh, so I'm quoting her maiden address in my maiden address. It's just, I feel like I'm giving her a platform that she doesn't deserve. <laughs> I believe we're in danger of being swamped by Asians. They have their own culture and religion, form ghettos and do not assimilate. 2018, 
I am 30 years old. I have mixed feelings about being here and being Australian. Before Happy Valley became the adoptive home of thousands of prospectors, it was the cornucopia of the traditional owners of that land, the Jarjawarung people of the Jara country. The many waterholes and creek banks were host to staple foods such as bulrushes and water ribbons. The fibrous plants that grow along Forest Creek were used for crafting baskets, mats, and string bags. Traditional medicines grew along these banks. The, t the timber from river red gums, blackwood, she oaks, and tea trees was employed in the construction of canoes, spears, boomerangs, shields, clubs, bowls, and other tools. This valley holds so much native knowledge. We took all this from them. Yellow is the color of the sun. Yellow is the color of the emperor, son of heaven. Yellow is the color of danger, peril. Yellow is the color of fever. Yellow is the color of the wattle blossoms that fringe the creek. Yellow is the color of a river that runs through me. Yellow is a strong and beautiful color. It's difficult to find traces of these people. That's why I find myself returning to this place. But vestigial roots remain. In spring, you can find wild spring onions growing along the banks of the Loddon River. I see their ghosts and I pay homage to them. Thank you. <laughs> Visit wheelercentre.com for the best in books, writing and ideas from Melbourne, Australia and the world.